Okay, so uh, celebrity plastic surgery. We're all uh, quite infatuated with uh, celebrities uh, for good reason, sometimes uh, not so good reason. We're going to talk about some of those uh, issues, concerns, and uh, uh, and then we can uh, talk about why we're so infatuated as far as uh, plastic surgery. So uh, a lot of uh, who we're going to talk about, uh, we're going to get to, but first I want to talk about the disclosures. First off, I'm a board certified plastic surgeon. Uh, the opinions that I'm going to mention regarding surgeries, injectables, and treatments are opinions. Uh, this does not mean that I've treated or operated it on any of those, and, and if I have had operated on uh, uh, people that we're going to mention and talk about, I can't say that. There are uh, uh, non-disclosures that uh, uh, I have signed that, that I cannot uh, talk about it, and there are HIPAA laws for patient uh, privacy, certainly, uh, that I cannot say that we did that. So consider everything as a uh, an opinion, and uh, we're going to talk about uh, um, the celebrities coming up. So uh, these are going to be, I almost had to rename this talk the, uh, the Jenner slash Kardashian talk because the most what we're going to talk about and what people are very infatuated with are the Kardashian slash Jenner. So uh, uh, we're going to talk about uh, mom, Kris Jenner, uh, in the picture all the way on the left is the 1990s, then 2005 and 2015. So during this time, uh, a lot of uh, celebrities do um, maintenance items similar to Botox, fillers, injectables, facials. But then uh, at some point, uh, uh, gravity and or aging uh, gets the best of us. And then you have to do uh, some uh, surgical enhancement. And uh, during that time, um, either before 2005, it looks like she had a facelift, and maybe even a second one between 2005 and 2015, because as you can see in 2015, she looks the same. It's not actually a bit better, and her cheeks are fuller. Uh, she looks natural. It's not overly done. Her lips are not huge. Um, that kind of distance between the nose and the lip that sometimes uh, gives away aging is actually better than when she was in 1990. So a little bit of net... Uh, lip enhancement or a lip lift, uh, cheek enhancement with fillers, and a facelift or two in between can do that. Under the other thing that if you take a look, she's actually had had breast enhancement as well, at least before 2005. So uh, that's uh, Kris Jenner. Kim Kardashian. Um, most commonly asked question uh, from patients and uh, news media is whether or not she's done anything uh, to her bum. And uh, uh, even though she quasi is admitted she has not, or she's admitted that she is not, uh, she definitely had had uh, buttock enhancement uh, procedures, uh, whether it be injections, fat, um, implant, and or certainly facial uh, injectables uh, and procedures are in the realm of things. The other thing that uh, looks like she, um, she's had is a rhinoplasty uh, to uh, make her nose look more well-defined and she looks phenomenal. She's got, she's got great cheek structure, she's got great lip structure and uh, and uh, body in it. Um, we're going to talk about at the very end the most commonly um, requested uh, uh, body parts from these celebrities and King K is not always number one. So we'll talk about that uh, as well. Then we have Chloe. Uh, Chloe uh, looks like she has had breast enhancement um, and uh, her bum as well is enhanced. And uh, those are, uh, I guess, something that runs in the Kardashian family uh, to uh, enhance that area. Uh, this is Courtney. Uh, she looks great. Um, one thing I must uh, mention is uh, even though she looks like her cheeks are fuller here, uh, uplifted, makeup can go a long way and lighting can go a lot of long way. This is a darker picture and this is a lighter picture. So whether or not she's had some fillers here, which is quite possible, lip fillers, um, also uh, enhanced skin texture, 
can be camouflaged with pictures and or makeup in addition to, of course, uh, a lot of the good things that I do or my injectable uh, colleagues do to uh, make them look better. But uh, uh, that's uh, important. Um, Kylie Jenner, uh, most number one requested lip in my office, Kylie Jenner's uh, lips. Probably not when it was the fullest and something in between the two, uh, but she's had uh, fillers done, certainly in her lips. Um, uh, she's had breast augmentation um, and um, she looks great. Uh, at some point in time, she's kind of been a bit overboard and the lips were a bit too big. And that's why we have a discussion with patients and sometimes with the imaging kind of emulate as to what they're going to look like and we'll discuss that uh, in terms of what we uh, would like our patients to look like. Kendall Jenner, uh, well, also she's uh, the youngest. I don't think she's had any fillers in her folds. Uh, she definitely had her upper lip injected. Uh, she's had uh, um, fuller lips between these two pictures that you can see and uh, I'm sure some skincare is involved there but in general uh, in terms of enhancement is her lips is uh, what I should uh, uh, see from the pictures. Bella Hadid uh, um, had a bit of a droopy nose uh, um, in the past and kind of her dorsum was a little wide. So she's had a rhinoplasty to define her nasal tip and she looks a lot more refined there and uh, her uh, is slightly elevated. The best angle for a woman for their nose is not to be turned down, but to be ever so slightly turned up. The tip is about 100 degrees, uh, about 95 to 100 degrees, and hers was too low. Uh, Kai Richards, uh, this is in 2006 and then 2019. Arguably, she looks better now than uh, 13 years uh, prior. Uh, those are all uh, um, contributed to uh, facial aesthetic surgery. She uh, has had her upper eyelids done, uh, facelift, um, and also uh, um, skin care. Botox uh, is kind of a uh, initial thing that we do for post speed a lot better. Uh, her ridded or tiny little wrinkles in those area are not gone, they're improved but not gone. And that's, I think the critical thing is not to eliminate any signs of aging, but to dramatically decrease it uh, so that, uh, you know, 13 year, years later, you actually look better. Um, Lisa Van Trump, uh, Vanderpump had uh, in 2010 quite a few wrinkles in her uh, post feet area. Um, she has some ridges here. Her neck doesn't look uh, that great. Some sun damage, certainly. And uh, here we are, uh, eight years later, with uh, improvement in those areas. Nice, nicer uh, contour. She's smiling a bit deeper here, so you may think that her folds are deeper, but she actually looks very natural here. And uh, I think that's uh, a nice uh, facial rejuvenation uh, uh, with a facelift. Lisa, um, she's an example of somebody who actually looks great um, right now, short of one thing which I'll get to. Uh, Serena's had uh, some um, her cheeks, her uh, nasal labial folds. Sometimes uh, you can go overboard with that, and uh, that's when excision surgery comes in, where instead of overfilling, you need to remove tissues and not overfill the cheeks. What she looks like she's had is silicone injections in her lips. And that's a very typical thing that happens uh, to, to lips if you've had permanent fillers injected in your lips. Silicone being the, uh, the worst one as it actually kind of clumps together and makes a, that area look uh, unnatural. And because it's permanent, it doesn't go away. And unfortunately, the only way to address that is surgical precision. Right? You have to have surgery to have that window. So the most common uh, lip fillers we use are, are Restylane, Juvederm um, type family or hyaluronic acids in the uh, lips, um, which are not permanent and can be uh, actually absorbed and or removed by different injections. But uh, silicone injections certainly is not one of those. Dolores uh, uh, Catania, um, this is uh, quite a drastic improvement in both uh, body and face. Uh, facelift, 
uh, lip injections, rhinoplasty, breast uh, enhancement in terms of uh, uh, lips and uh, augmentation um, makes her look like a different person in, in, in a nice way. And she looks natural. And uh, not too uh, uncommonly asked uh, um, about uh, wanting to look like that. Melissa Gorga, um, nasal, nasal enhancement. She had a, uh, a droopy tip and a, uh, a uh, semi-hump in the top part of her uh, nose, and that's enhanced nicely with a natural uh, uh, tip of her nose, um, as well as uh, a natural shape, so she looks really good, as well as uh, breast enhancement. Uh, that's the shadow of an implant. Aminat McClure, uh, mother of uh, twins McClure, um, she uh, looks great, breast enhancement, body contouring. Uh, some of these celebrities are actually uh, uh, open about uh, uh, having had procedures and uh, hernia repairs, and uh, they, uh, uh, they feel better about these types of procedures. They look uh, better, and uh, that's what... Uh, mommy makeovers and or facial body enhancements all about. Victoria Beckham, um, this is uh, over quite a few number of years. Uh, she's been uh, actually open about breast enhancement. Uh, as you can see, she was quite flat here and uh, uh, she's fuller in her uh, bust uh, in terms of breast augmentation. Uh, she's had facial fillers and uh, and she she had a she inherently had had uh, a chiseled jawline and chiseled uh, uh, cheeks and uh, malar area and that can be enhanced even further with small amounts of filler and it's all about keeping it natural and doing small amounts of uh, volumization to make things uh, look better. Her nasal tip actually looks like she's had a tiny little adjustment to her uh, tip as well, where. Uh, she still looks very natural without a big change in her uh, overall uh, uh, shape, but uh, improved and uh, pretty age proof at this point. Taylor Swift uh, has uh, had uh, nasal procedure, rhinoplasty, uh, to improve the appearance of her nose. Her nose is wider here and not as well defined as it is in this uh, picture. She's also has had breast augmentation. Uh, those are implants uh, most likely over the muscle. Smaller implants, natural, and uh, um, she looks great. Nicole Kidman um, is one of those uh, ageless uh, Hollywood celebrities. And over the years, she, she looks great and can run the gamut of, uh, of injectable uh, fillers, uh, Botox, um, and skincare, and uh, and also with patients, what we call Fitzpatrick one or two, which she is when they're super uh, light, you can actually do quite a bit with peeling of the skin in terms of facial rejuvenation and rid it and getting rid of the uh, uh, the, ta uh, the fine wrinkles of the face without actually doing a facelift. So I actually don't think she's had a facelift. Uh, nose, yes, I don't think she's had a facelift. She's had breast enha enhancement. But she's um, maintained well uh, up until this picture with uh, with a lot of uh, skin care and injectables, uh, non-surgical skin tightening, like Ulthera. Katy Perry. Um, these two pictures are very interesting because that they're about five years apart. Um, uh, she looks like she actually is a bit heavier in the 2013 picture than here. But regardless of that, there's breast enhancement involved there. Um, no surgery is uh, done. Fillers uh, in terms of uh, lips as well as uh, facial injectables, Botox, those are mainstay uh, uh, items uh, in terms of enhancement and of course uh, as well as uh, maintenance. Iggy Azalea is actually uh, pretty forward about the fact that she's had surgical enhancement. Um, with uh, her bum, um, the BBL, as well as breast enhancement. Not necessarily in this picture, but she's open about the fact that she's had breast augmentation. Um, and uh, she looks great, and, uh, and this exudes in her, and uh, she's uh, happy talking about it. Most celebrities are not, but uh, it's nice to see that uh, some actually open about talking about it, so everybody else knows that uh, 
sometimes you're born with a lot of natural uh, beauty and sometimes uh, um, we can help uh, nature out a bit and of course if aging continues then regardless of the gene pool uh, we can improve some of that. Now Nicki Minaj, uh, this is her quite tiny and this is her not so tiny. Um, she's had BBL and or implants um, and uh, um, this just does not happen unless you gained uh, more than 100 pounds, and uh, that's certainly not affected in the rest of the body. Cardi B has been open about uh, having had liposuction, having had uh, uh, BBLs, uh, breast enhancement. Uh, one thing that she's been very open about is the fact that she's had illegal silicone injections. Uh, um, this is predating um, the time where she actually... Uh, was quite famous, and uh, and that's unfortunately a, a big yeah, endemic issue where uh, patients, for cost reasons, are having illegal silicone injections for enhancement of the buttocks area. Sometimes I've actually seen it in the breast, and unfortunately, it causes a lot of issues similar to injections in the in the lips. Uh, it can cause uh, granulomas. It can cause issues that would require surgery for even cut to remove it or ultrasonic liposuction to remove it. So let's talk about some men. Um, before and after, in general, uh, unless necessarily needed, um, facelifts in men can look a little overly done. And uh, um, I try to reserve that for people who absolutely need it, especially in the necks, especially in the eyelids. Men in general look better with eyelid surgery. Simon has had his uh, lower eyelids done. He has uh, a good look. Uh, in the af after picture compared to the before picture, his eyes are more open, but a bit at a um, um, problem of uh, you kind of see what's called an ectopian or the lower eyelids look a little slanted down and out. And unfortunately, when you have that, you end up with uh, not looking uh, quite right. His, his infectious smile that you can see in the before pictures, it's, he's almost smiling at the same time. Uh, level, but you, you kind of, it's not conveying in the eyes because of that. Um, one thing that happens with men also, we, we start aging a lot in the upper forehead and the, the lateral part of the brow, and occasionally with Botox, and he's had Botox, as you can see, these lines are not as dramatic, that actually drops the brow even further. So upper eyelid and brow lift reverses that nicer than lower eyelid surgery alone, which... Uh, I would suspect him uh, having ha would need to have an upper eyelid surgery to kind of bring his uh, nice, infectious uh, smile back. Uh, John Travolta has had a facelift, uh, has had lower eyelid surgery, um, maybe even upper eyelid, even though he's got some drooping. One of the nice things about his upper eyelid is the fact that he actually does have some characteristic uh, uh, upper eyelid uh, ridded or uh, wrinkles. and. Uh, looks good in the upper eyelid. Lower eyelids in men usually start bulging out a lot and he doesn't have that, uh, um, which is a, a nice uh, issue. And at the same time, you're not seeing that slanted lower eyelid look that could be a, a uh, giveaway for um, having had lower eyelid surgery or a tropium, which actually is a relative, uh, it's a complication of a lower eyelid surgery that needs to be fixed. Uh, Carson, uh, I think at this point, he's only had enhancement in terms of injections. His lips certainly um, um, has had, go back, has had uh, Botox. He actually looks like he could use a little bit more Botox on the top part of his uh, uh, forehead. Another lip that likely has been injected with silicone. This is a bit of a silicone telltale sign. And uh, uh, unfortunately, the only way to get rid of that would be surgery and then replacement of that volume with um, with injectables, and uh, otherwise, uh, it looks great. So, why are we talking about all these uh, celebrities, and what's the infatuation that we have with them? A lot of it has to do with what what people perceive as beautiful is is really what we see on uh, on TV, uh, social media, Instagram, and a lot of that comes uh, at to in the consult room with me and. A lot of patients ask for Jennifer Aniston's nose, ask for Brooke Shields' nose or eyelid. Uh, so now I'm going to talk about body parts that are most commonly asked in my office in terms of uh, 
what kind of natural um, things and sometimes so not so natural things people are actually asking for. So nose is uh, primarily Jennifer Aniston and uh, uh, and then I get a lot of Brooke Shields as well. Breasts, I get uh, Salma Hayek. For breasts are very interesting is in, in New York and Northeast in general, we're a bit more conservative. And uh, the natural look is what most people ask for. And I would say Salma Hayek is is actually probably on the bigger end of things that people ask you typically ask for. And uh, more commonly than not, I get that I don't want them to look like Dolly Parton or anything big, which is a nice relief since I don't like to make them that big, yeah, unless specifically requested. But in, in general, natural is what we go for. Lips, hands down, Kylie Jenner is what everybody uh, asks for and most people say that they don't want to go to that extreme but a bit less and in general with lips it's something that i like to do stepwise it's always easier to add more as opposed to trying to take back and it's all about doing little bits at a time a most people don't know you did anything and you gradually increase and uh and uh make that enhancement a lot better now lips is not always about volume and one of the things <clears throat> about lips that's important is the distance between the upper lip and the uh, and the nose with aging actually increases. And some people even inherently have it even though they're younger. So it's about not just a lot of volume and sometimes just about uh, uh, adding volume and decreasing that distance. Sometimes that needs to happen with surgery called the lip lift to be able to lift that area up or even with Botox called the lip flip. When we do Botox in the upper eyelid, upper lip, it actually can flip the upper lip and make it So hands down, when it comes to buttocks, J-Lo is who uh, we get. This is a very interesting picture uh, of her. Um, this is not a few years ago, but uh, natural. She's a little bit, uh, have, uh, has more of a booty now than she did before. In the last Super Bowl, we saw it in, on display nicely. But uh, she's definitely one that we get a lot uh, of requests in terms of uh, finalizing the shape and look of her bum in terms of a nice shape, curve, and uh, athletic arms um arms and legs michelle obama gets that and uh, i get a lot of requests for kind of a chiseled upper arm something that looks natural not necessarily muscular but uh more uh shapely uh in terms of uh, athletic and fit abs uh, here's Demi Moore, who's had uh, liposuction in her lower abdomen, uh, upper abdomen, and she looks great uh, for her age uh, overall. And I get a lot of requests for her abs looking like that or other uh, models that are much younger but still have abs that look like Demi Moore. So that we get a lot of uh, requests for her. So I'm gonna I'm gonna mention a few things about overall rejuvenations that I do. These are my own patients that we to show their pictures. Whether or not being in nose job, that angle that we talked about, chin augmentation, liposuction of the uh, of the neck, yeah, facelift, which doesn't mean that you have to look ten years younger. Just rejuvenated with a scar that is basically imperceptible. You never see that scar. The wrinkles are gone. The neck contour looks a lot better. Neck, neck liposuction to bring somebody from a very obtuse angle like that to make them look a lot better. Um, and those are all rejuvenations that need to be done tastefully and naturally. Notice in the previous uh, picture, I, I, I didn't say the most common celebrity facelift that people are asked for. Because the whole idea of a facelift is that you don't know that they did anything. And uh, that's why it's all about keeping it natural and making them look good. When it comes to uh, implantation, it's about natural shape, natural size. If somebody's got uh, droopy breasts, make them uplifted, make their areola smaller, um, and either whether or not putting implants inside to lift them, support from the inside with meshes, uh, using a fat transfer to improve uh, contour as opposed to implants, many options available. Uh, mommy makeovers, which is um, probably the number one thing I do in my practice, or I did before COVID and hopefully coming back soon, um, is body contouring with liposuction, tiny little holes that are hidden in the bikini, 
bring in the scarf. This comment looks like Demi Moore. And uh, I didn't say anything. And then just bring in the waistline in and uh, thighs, lateral thighs, all contoured in. And has a shape of working gaps. She hasn't worked that at all, but it looks like she's pretty fit. Or a mommy who's had uh, abdominal uh, stretch marks from pregnancies, as hernias, breasts are smaller after breastfeeding. Uh, had, you know, I did a tummy tuck, which is in a bikini and a nice inny. I put implants in through her tummy tuck scar uh, incision so that she has no uh, uh, scars on her breasts. And, and that's a big mommy makeover with basically just a scar here that's in a bikini. Arms, we do a brachioplasty where we remove the extra skin. The scar is underneath here, so you don't see it. Uh, fat injections with caps to make somebody's caps look like Michelle Obama's and or implants to make that look better. Liposuction, obviously, with thigh lifts, different body parts that need to be removed. Typically, somebody like that is after weight loss, but they've lost a lot of weight and aging as well. And, of course, uh, BBLs or body lifts where we kind of turn people that are quite square into heart shape. Still natural, nothing uh, dramatic or big. Uh, yeah, huge, but more natural looking. Uh, uh, so, uh, because of COVID, we're all inside now, um, except for immediate post operative patients, emergencies like lacerations or open wounds. We're not seeing patients in the office, so what we're doing is we're doing virtual consultations and follow up. Um, in using different modalities, and I want to talk about that a bit, uh, about how that process works. The first thing is that you would, I would need a, a, a bit of information about you. It's a short online form that you will need to um, fill out. Also tells us that you're agreeing to have this uh, consultation virtually um, for me to take a look at you, take a look at your uh, your history, uh, as well as uh, talk about the different options that are available and you can share those photos um, online or of course I'll take pictures while we're on our virtual consultation and uh, we'll talk about that a bit. Uh, our good patient coordinators, uh, that's Kristen, she'll get in touch with you within 24 hours to schedule a uh, that virtual appointment uh, during which um, I'm going to get on and uh, discuss what we need to do. So we could do that either by FaceTime, Zoom, Skype, Doximity, now that we actually have an internal way of doing it with our own uh, uh, internal software that keeps it HIPAA compliant and, and, and it keeps it uh, confidential. Initially, I did not want to do a lot of Zoom because of the Zoom uh, um, hacking, but that now that's been uh, um, fixed and uh, it's uh, quite safe where um, people can't bomb the Zoom anymore. You would have to be invited in to be able to uh, um, have something very uh, private. One of the other things that I want to talk about during our Skype or Zoom consults is, uh, depending on the procedure, like rhinoplasties, uh, occasionally for breasts and uh, for buttock enhancement, I can actually show you what you're going to look like with our 3D software. Uh, that I can take a picture, upload it, and while we're on, um, kind of simulate what you're going to look like after. And that could be uh, sent to you on a uh, secure platform where you can be log on to be able to take a look at it at home as well. So I'd like to open things up for Q&A. Uh, Jackie, please moderate the questions and we can answer some of the questions that our, uh, our audience asked. Great. Thank you so much, Jackie. That was really insightful. We actually have a lot of questions coming in, and then we also had some questions that people had written in um, previously before our webinar. So I'm just going to start with some of the questions that have been written in the chat. So one, the first question, did Kris Jenner do anything to her eyes in the first slide? Want to go back? We can check slide. it out and see what you think. Uh, I'm going to go to the first slide. It's quite common that you just don't do a facelift alone. A lot of times we do facelift and uh, um, eyelid surgery at the same time. And uh, very commonly, if you don't do the lower eyelid or upper eyelid surgery at the same time, you end up with a basically inappropriate upper eyelid compared to face or vice versa. If you did the upper eyelid, then you didn't do the face. 
So between 20, uh, 2005 and 2015, I actually think she had had her eyelids done as well. Uh, between 1990 and 2005, maybe not. We could get away with injections quite a bit there, but ap after a while, if you have too much loose skin, it would just need to be removed. And between those two pictures, uh, she's had that. Okay, good. Um, how well, now? If you want to go to Salma Hayek, we have a question. Uh, you know, based on what you think, how large are her breasts? If um, if someone wanted to come in with implants to get some implants, and maybe they had they had a fairly flatter chest. Right. So first, of all, I must say, but the most commonly requested size in the U.S. is a D cup. In general, a D cup, especially uh, different bra manufacturers make different bra cup sizes. And in her case, I actually would put her in a Victoria's Secret D cup. Um, having said that, Victoria's Secret, you kind of can think of it as a uh, European cup size. It's a bit small. They run quite small. So realistically speaking, she's more like a full C cup than a D cup. But that's a uh, most common uh, size that uh, asks for breast enhancement. Most commonly, we go from an A to a uh, C cup, full C cup, which is where uh, she kind of is. Okay. Um, can we talk about fixing jow jowls as we age? Yes, that's uh, one of the very first signs of uh, facial aging is jowling. I'm going to talk about uh, um, John Travolta, for example. If you see in in this before, uh, his younger picture, his, he's got a really chiseled jawline. He's just starting to see jowls and pre-jowling there. That happens because we have attachments to the bone in front of the uh, jowl, and we don't have attachments to the bone behind the jowl. So there are a few things we could do. Certainly, a facelift, once you get a little bit older, is the mainstay to address that and reclaim facelift. And I don't like to do that until patients are probably in their 60s. So you end up doing it only one time in your lifetime as opposed to doing two or three facelifts over time, which would start looking done. Uh, so there are a lot of things we could do beforehand, like non-surgical tightening, threads to lift up, and or filling in front of it to do that. There's a procedure called a Y-lift where we actually inject um, in, in the area of the, uh, the pre-jowl of uh, volume, which lasts about two plus years, to kind of enhance and kind of chisel out that jawline and also bring out the, the back part of the mandible. And uh, injections like that can go a long way and basically holding people over with these non-surgical treatments up until that time where we have to do that face that hopefully only one time in their lifetime. Okay, thank you. Um, so next question, how do you prevent the rippling in the stomach if you get liposuction or like a BBL in the buttocks? That's a really good question. It's a very uh, uh, common thing that we're uh, doing these days in that it used to be that we only could do liposuction and this is more, more like 15 years ago where, where we actually really come leaps and bounds in terms of skin tightening. First and foremost, it's about the artistry of how much fat you remove from what area. Like in this example, she's had a lot of fat removes from her waistline, but I left small amounts in the middle to kind of make her look like she has a contour. But most importantly, what we did is we did skin tightening. And now we've come a whole gamut of different having different modalities to do skin tightening. The very first one we had was a laser, which was Smart Lipo, and I've had it for now 15 years almost. Then uh, RFAL, or uh, non-surgical, uh, or surgical skin tanning with uh, radio frequency. And the newest one is Renuvian or J-Plasma. So these are all procedures that are done after I do the uh, liposuction and I've contoured the area. Then we attack the skin and go inside on the inside of the skin and tighten it with either laser, uh, radio frequency or skin tightening with removing or jane plasma. So you have to combine these modalities. And if you just did liposuction, you are going to get irregularities and that. You need to tighten the skin overlying, not a deflated area. Okay. And actually, a similar question. Someone has asked, it seems like there's 
a lot of disfigured belly buttons when people get liposuction or even a tummy tuck you know how is that prevented that's a really good question and i think her that question is about uh, redoing a belly button when you do a tummy tuck the belly button really doesn't change like this liposuction thing because the belly button has not changed because i didn't do anything to the belly button all i did is make an incision just to give access to the, the tiny little hole for uh for liposuction but in a tummy tuck you're redoing the entirety of the belly button so uh basically the inside of the belly button will remain the same but on the outside you make a brand new belly button and then that's the artistry of how you make that belly button for example i have a very specialized technique that i teach my fellows how to do where um you spend a good half an hour or so just on the belly button trying to perfect that because that's kind of a telltale sign of not having had a good tummy tuck and it's about really making it an any and bringing it in and also developing a bit of an upper hoodie to uh, camouflage the scar and not make it too tiny. Or sometimes you see like a mushroom coming out that's made, that was made too big. And uh, it's not uncommon that I actually revise some of uh, all these on tummy tuck, belly buttons or scars to make those look better. Okay, great. Um... So moving on, some people have some questions about lip lifts. So the question is really, is is it possible to do um, like a preview during a Zoom console of what your lip lift would look like? Or how would you go about that before yeah, the it's possible uh, to do that at the right angle, especially if it's a profile lip lift that's necessary. Uh, there are different kinds of lift lifts. The most common one is one where uh, it's almost like a uh, a mustache skin that's removing the upper eyelid, upper lip. The younger that you are, the less likely it is that you would need that. Um, and sometimes the Botox can uh, make that look better. But uh, with uh, aging, that distance increases. And uh, yeah, we can do a preview of what it would look like if we did it. So uh, if you set that up, we can uh, make that happen. Okay, awesome. It's good to know. So someone said, I've read about gummy bear implants. Do you use those? And if um, not, you know, what are the most natural looking options for implants? So in uh, general, uh, gummy bear implants overall are considered silicone implants. There are different levels of uh, cohesiveness or thickness of the implants. And I use them all depending on the, uh, um, on the indications of what the patient needs. Um, in general, the majority of the implants I use are gummy bear silicone implants. I occasionally do saline implants. The most common reason to use a saline implant is to avoid any scars altogether going through the belly button. But that has to do with the ratio of the future breast compared to the breast that the patient has before surgery. And if that ratio is the majority implant, uh, I would recommend doing, going with silicone, which is more natural in terms of... Uh, shape and feel for the most part um, whereas in terms of not having a scar it's nice to do go through the belly button when you have to use a saline implant but saline implants are just volumizers so if somebody wants to go from an a cup to a b cup or maybe a b cup to a c cup just a one cup size increase can make it a really good option for that okay great um so oh this is about celebrities so if there are do you have any celebrities in mind that you would consider consider to be an unsuccessful surgery or enhancement? I think we talked about uh, Simon uh, being uh, uh, one of them um, in terms of you know how his eyelids look, um, and uh, there there are other ones that uh, uh, are out there, and I, I wanted to kind of keep this positive and not talk about. Uh, some of the neg negativity about uh, some um, some patients, uh, some uh, celebrities who's had uh, they don't look as good as uh, you'd like them to. But in general, overly overly filled is what you see a lot of, uh, and uh, it's kind of trying to bring that back and and making it more natural, which is what most people want. Okay. Yeah, I think that's that sounds great. Um. So next question, can you remove fat from around the mouth and put it in to fill scars? And, you know, another patient also asks about um, fat transfer to the face instead of fillers, which 
kind of all goes together. So can you speak a little to that? Yes, fat, fat injection to the face is a common procedure. I don't like to do it in patients who have had, uh, who have not had any other floors before. Uh, fat injection to the face is the best advantage is the fact that it's permanent. A uh, portion, about 40% of the fat that is injected in your face, basically becomes your own tissue and transplanted in that area. So it's it's inherently a really nice thing to do. Two bad things about fat is one, you need a trip to the operating room to do it. So it has a little bit of more downtime than say just having uh, a wrestling or uh, uh, Juvederm done. But a lot of times I do it when the patient's already going to be in the operating room, putting on a facelift or any other procedure. Uh, so that's its, its biggest drawback. The second thing is I would have to over-inject to counteract the fact that you would have to uh, lose a portion of that fat. About 40 to 50% gets absorbed. So over-injection means more downtime. So typically people have had fat injections in addition to going to the operating room. Even though it's under local anesthesia and it can be removed from other areas, there's a, at least about a week of downtime uh, before they're normalized. Whereas with fillers, uh, you don't have that downtime. So um, I'd like to kind of tailor that to every patient, and those are the discussions we have during consultation. Okay, and I mean, can you also remove fat around your mouth? Is that yeah, an sure. option? Yeah, that, that, that could be done as well, yes. Okay. Um, next question, what can you do for a sagging neck? A sagging neck is actually one of the probably second parts of uh, facial aging that happens. The neck is probably more important than the rest of the face in terms of... Uh, uh, rejuvenation. So the neck is a lot more difficult to address um, non-surgically. Okay, so um, the neck can be done non-surgically, which is basically lifting up the uh, uh, neckline with non-surgical rejuvenation like Ulthera completely non-surgical, um, where and and then you could do tightening surgically but minimally invasive, and that's a combination of liposuction with uh, with either radiofrequency or uh, or Renuvian for skin tightening. For example, uh, let's go to this patient of mine that we did that on. So one in the younger patient, as you can see, I did liposuction with skin tightening. And one uh, bit older patient where we did some tightening with uh, with radio, radio frequency and uh, not as nice of a surgical one. She's had a pro proper face with a neck lift, but still a dramatic. Okay, thank you so much. Um, let's see what the next questions are. Uh, how do your patients do with fat transfer to the breast? Um, this person said that they've read that they're more prone to irregular mammograms. And so also the fat, fat injection to the breast is a good option uh, for people that have some good inherent breast tissue. It's a good option for patients who've had implants and had free expansion. So once they take the implants out, we can replace that with their own fat. Uh, it's not good for somebody who's very flat. Like, for example, this patient is super flat. She was an A cup. She wants to go from A to C. Fat injection is not a good option. If you wanted to go from a B to a C, that would have been a good option. So when we do fat grafting in the face and we just talk about the face or anywhere else in the body, uh, a portion of the fat gets absorbed. For mammogram purposes, that absorbed part can, on a mammogram can look like breast cancer. It is not breast cancer, but could look like it. So you would have to then now let your mammographer know that you've had fat injection in your breast every time you have a mammography. Not necessarily more often. You still have it once a year. And as long as they know what they're looking at, it's perfectly fine to do it. And now I don't like to do it in patients who have had a history of breast cancer. And that's because it actually will put them at high risk of needing unnecessary breast biopsies that basically shows that it was bad. And, but short of that, it doesn't cause breast cancer, um, nor does it uh, decrease uh, detection in somebody who's not had a history of breast cancer. Okay. Thank you so much. Next question, what kind of implant is good for a bodybuilder? In general, a bodybuilder uh, should not have implants placed under the muscle. So I like to put the implants over the muscle. 
uh, so that it, the movement uh, of the implants is not going to be dramatically increased with, uh, with bodybuilding. So for that reason, I like to use cohesive uh, gel implant, the most gummy bear of all implants. Um, and uh, those placed over the muscle will not ripple, which is one of the issues that you can have with, uh, with implants uh, over the muscle. And uh, we've had great experience with that. And occasionally, I've even combining it with what I call a composite or natural breast uh, uh, enhancement, where we put the implant over the muscle, but then put a bit of their own fat around the implant to kind of camouflage the implant with, uh, uh, over the muscle. Uh, I'm going to go back to um, a picture from. Taylor Swift, uh, as you can see, you kind of see the edge of the implant. She's pretty skinny, but if you put the implant over the muscle, this edge shows a bit, and putting a tiny bit of fat in that area will camouflage that really nicely. Okay, that's good to know. So next question, or more of a statement, this person wrote, I would like to know more about the Nuvo diet. So like anything else, uh, um, Losing uh, weight could uh, dramatically improve uh, quite a few things, uh, abdominal girth, waistline, and, uh, and that's something that's uh, a medical uh, uh, great diet that we have in our patients, typically for patients undergoing surgery. So I'd like to have patients uh, go on the new diet uh, 40 days and lose 30 pounds before surgery. But now that uh, uh, we're all at home and uh, we all uh, have had the uh, COVID-15 pound weight loss, weight gain rather, um, that diet can be administrated at home. Um, it's a very low fat diet uh, and strict adherence to that low fat and, and to the program will make you lose weight, 30 pounds in 40 days, which is pretty impressive. Okay, good to know. Next up we have, um, if, if a patient is susceptible to capsular contracture, Will using Galloflex help prevent it from reoccurring? So there are uh, some evidence to show that bringing new tissue to the breast can improve capsular contraction. Now, capsule contracture is one of the biggest issues with breast augmentation. If you have a capsule that's formed around the implant and that implant gets hard, if you ever hug somebody that you feel their implants, they probably have capsule contracture. Um, and that can happen in different variant degrees. Um, I don't jump using ADM or mesh to improve capsule contracture unless patients have failed other methods on non-surgical methods like aspen or release and or removal of the capsule first. For refractive uh, patients, patients have failed those options, I then introduce ADM or uh, mesh. And that's mainly for the reasons of patients having difficulty with both um, basically rejecting this mesh and higher risks of uh, infection if you jump to do that right off the bat. Okay, thank you. And another question um, around that same subject. If you're not quite ready for a traditional breast lift, are you still able to use the internal bra breast lift? Can you do something like that to help without using implants or, you know, going the traditional route? That's a good common question that I get from a lot of younger patients um, that may be thinking about uh, breast uh, feeding and or uh, uh, pregnancies and they want to have breast augmentation. And what we do is a little bit of a shortcut where I do an internal lift with or without a mesh um and put the implant over the muscles trying to give them some enhancement until the time where they will be ready after 10 years plus or whenever that may be to have a formal lift so it's kind of an in-between thing that you can have done prior to committing to that having said that if you're uh dramatically in need of a lift nothing replaces a true lift and uh um at least the great majority of patients 80 percent plus can continue breastfeeding and uh, have sensation with a traditional uh, a breast lift with scars. And we have a comprehensive scar program that addresses the scars to make them look as best as they can, uh, even though they're gonna be there. Okay, great. Um, 
couple more questions. So this one, does uh, using implants over the muscle still leave the breast sagging? Not necessarily. And it has to do with how the pocket is, uh, how the internal lift is done inside the uh, breast. So uh, it has to do with how much you can breast envelope of life. And uh, if that's not the case where your patient doesn't need a traditional lift, it doesn't have to actually uh, um, lead to additional hanging. Awesome. Um, so this person said she's not overweight and she has fit arms, but she still has that arm sagging skin. What is, do you have any options to help tighten that area up? So either a traditional arm lift to remove the extra skin if it's not too saggy or uh, just skin tightening without fat removal. A lot of people actually have some fat in the back of the arm uh, that bothers them kind of like the in Jennifer here in this upper part of their arm. If they have that liposuction and skin tightening with either Removion or laser, dramatic thing keeps that. And that's something that we do on the local planet to show you how to do it um and next is besides arnica what vitamins do you recommend prior to surgery to help speed up the healing process there is no uh magic potion uh arnica and bromelain are two uh items that have been shown to be using uh vitamins uh, a c and D, e uh, sorry a c and d can actually help healing as well uh as long as you're you have you your body needs a lot of protein to heal after surgery. As long as you actually have the protein you take and you have your vegetables, your body will heal nice. The thing not to do or more important than things to do, and that is smoking or even being around somebody that smokes, uh, caffeine, those are the things that retard healing. And that's why we need at least twice before surgery to go through some specific things that you would need before surgery to become the meal. Okay. Um, so, does running or doing a lot of cardio affect a breast lift in the long run? No, I don't think cardio will uh, affect the uh, breast at all. Having said that, obviously, if you're running and you're not supporting your breast, whether or not you have an implant, that could take a uh, gravity effect. So, you would have to have uh, some sort of uh, um, a uh, sports bra or uh, uh, to be able to help with uh, overall. And I think most people do that. Uh, but in general, I don't think in and of itself it can be affected uh, short of massive weight loss. Thank you. Um, that's really it. I mean, we have one more question, which I think I can answer. Um, do we offer any free consultations? So right now, um, there is a fee for our consultations. But for anyone who has joined this webinar, if you mention that you watched our Celebrity Plastic Surgery webinar to our patient coordinators, we're going to be offering you $50 off your consult fee. Um, and then, I mean, you know, we had some nice comments. Hope you and your family remain safe during COVID-19. And we can't wait to see you back in the office again, Dr. Rani. Thank you. It was fantastic. We love you, Dr. Rani. Uh, thank you so much, and I appreciate everybody joining us. Looks like we've uh, turned the corner, and hopefully before we know it, we'll back uh, in the office to be able to see you guys. In the meantime, see you online. Thank you.